Alfonso Cajero, A Journey into Finance History, Chapter 22, The Panic of 1825, The First Modern Economic Crisis. The Panic of 1825 stands as the first modern economic crisis, signaling a shift in the nature and scale of financial instability. The early 19th century was a period of rapid economic growth and industrial expansion, fueled by technological advancements and increasing globalization. However, this period of prosperity was accompanied by speculative fervor and excessive risk-taking, particularly in the realm of finance. In the years leading up to the Panic of 1825, Britain experienced a speculative boom, fueled by easy credit, speculation in foreign markets, and rampant speculation in securities. Investors, emboldened by the promise of quick profits, poured money into speculative ventures such as canals, railways, and overseas ventures. This speculative frenzy led to inflated asset prices, excessive borrowing, and unsustainable levels of leverage, setting the stage for a financial reckoning. The Panic of 1825 was triggered by a series of events that exposed the underlying fragility of the financial system. One of the key catalysts was the bursting of the speculative bubble in Latin American securities, which had been fueled by expectations of rapid economic growth and political stability in the region. When political unrest and economic turmoil erupted in Latin America, investors rushed to sell their holdings, leading to a sharp decline in asset prices and widespread panic. The collapse of the Latin American securities market sent shockwaves through the British financial system exposing the precarious position of many banks, investment firms, and merchants. As investors sought to liquidate their holdings and repay their debts, a liquidity crisis ensued, with banks struggling to meet the demands of depositors and creditors. This sudden withdrawal of liquidity led to a cascade of bank failures, bankruptcies, and financial panic, as confidence in the banking system evaporated and credit dried up. The Panic of 1825 quickly spread beyond Britain, reverberating throughout Europe and the United States. In continental Europe, banks and financial institutions that had invested heavily in British securities and speculative ventures found themselves facing insolvency as asset prices plummeted and credit markets seized up. Similarly, in the United States, the panic triggered a wave of bank failures, business bankruptcies, and economic downturn as American merchants and investors suffered the consequences of Britain's financial collapse. The Panic of 1825 had far-reaching economic and social consequences, plunging Britain and much of Europe into a deep recession and causing widespread unemployment, poverty, and social unrest. The collapse of banks and financial institutions wiped out the savings of countless individuals and businesses, leading to a loss of confidence in the financial system and a reluctance to invest or lend money. Moreover, the Panic of 1825 exposed the inadequacies of the prevailing regulatory and monetary framework, prompting calls for reform and greater government intervention in the economy. In response to the crisis, the British government implemented a series of measures aimed at stabilizing the financial system, including the introduction of temporary relief measures for struggling banks, the establishment of a commission to investigate the causes of the panic, and the enactment of legislation to strengthen banking regulation and oversight. Despite these efforts, the Panic of 1825 left a lasting legacy of economic instability and financial insecurity, underscoring the need for greater prudence, transparency, and accountability in the conduct of financial affairs. While subsequent economic crises would surpass the Panic of 1825 in magnitude and severity, its significance as the first modern economic crisis cannot be overstated, as it laid bare the inherent vulnerabilities and risks of an interconnected and speculative financial system. In the aftermath of the Panic of 1825, governments and financial authorities scrambled to contain the crisis and restore confidence in the financial system. Central banks intervened to provide liquidity to banks and financial institutions, offering emergency loans and purchasing distressed assets to prevent further bank failures and stabilize credit markets. These measures helped to mitigate the immediate impact of the crisis and prevent a complete collapse of the financial system. However, 
the Panic of 1825 had lasting repercussions that reverberated throughout the economy for years to come. The sudden contraction of credit led to a sharp economic downturn characterized by falling output, rising unemployment, and widespread hardship. Businesses face difficulty obtaining financing for investment and expansion, leading to a slowdown in economic activity and a wave of bankruptcies and closures. Moreover, the panic shattered public confidence in the banking system and underscored the need for greater regulation and oversight. In response to the crisis, governments enacted a series of reforms aimed at strengthening the stability and resilience of the financial system. These reforms included stricter capital requirements for banks, enhanced disclosure requirements, and the establishment of regulatory bodies to supervise and monitor financial institutions. The Panic of 1825 also had profound social and political consequences, fueling discontent and unrest among the population. Many blamed the crisis on the greed and recklessness of financiers and speculators, leading to calls for greater accountability and regulation of the financial sector. In Britain, the crisis contributed to the rise of the Chartist movement, a working-class movement advocating for political and social reform, and spurred debates over the role of government in regulating the economy. Overall, the Panic of 1825 served as a wake-up call for policymakers and financial authorities, highlighting the dangers of unchecked speculation and the need for prudent financial management. While the crisis inflicted significant economic and social damage, it also paved the way for important reforms that would help to prevent similar crises in the future. The Panic of 1825 left a lasting imprint on the economic landscape, prompting a period of reflection and reassessment of prevailing economic theories and practices. Economists and policymakers sought to understand the root causes of the crisis and identify lessons that could be applied to future economic policymaking. One of the key lessons learned from the Panic of 1825 was the importance of financial stability and the need for effective mechanisms to prevent and mitigate financial crises. Policymakers recognized the need for greater regulation and oversight of the financial system to curb excessive risk-taking and ensure the stability of banks and financial institutions. This led to the development of new regulatory frameworks and supervisory mechanisms aimed at safeguarding the stability of the financial system. Additionally, the crisis prompted a revaluation of prevailing economic theories, particularly regarding the role of credit and speculation in driving economic fluctuations. Economists began to explore the relationship between financial markets and the real economy, seeking to develop models that could better capture the dynamics of financial crises and their impact on economic activity. The Panic of 1825 also spurred innovations in monetary policy and central banking. Central banks began to play a more active a role in managing the money supply and stabilizing financial markets, using tools such as open market operations and discount rate adjustments to influence economic conditions. These efforts helped to prevent future crises and promote monetary stability in the years that followed. Overall, the Panic of 1825 served as a catalyst for change and innovation in the field of economics and finance. While the crisis inflicted significant economic pain and hardship, it also provided valuable lessons that would shape the development of economic theory and policy for generations to come. While the Panic of 1825 originated in Britain, its impact was felt far beyond the shores of the United Kingdom, reverberating throughout Europe and beyond. The crisis exposed the interconnectedness of the global financial system and demonstrated how disturbances in one part of the world could quickly spread to others. In continental Europe, the Panic of 1825 triggered a wave of financial instability, as banks and financial institutions that had invested heavily in British securities and speculative ventures found themselves facing insolvency. The crisis led to a tightening of credit conditions, a contraction in economic activity, and widespread social unrest particularly in countries such as France and Germany. The Panic of 1825 also spurred innovations in economic theory, particularly regarding the relationship between financial markets and the real economy. 
economists began to develop new models and frameworks that could better capture the dynamics of financial crises and their impact on economic activity. This led to important advancements in the field of macroeconomics and laid the groundwork for future research into the causes and consequences of financial instability. Overall, the Panic of 1825 served as a catalyst for change and innovation in the field of economics and finance. While the crisis inflicted significant economic pain and hardship, it also provided valuable lessons that would shape the development of economic theory and policy for generations to come.